A hundred and one Dalmatians. In a tiny flat in London, just around the corner from Regent's Park, a Dalmatian named Pongo lived with his owner, Roger. Roger was a songwriter. He would spend hours every day tapping out new songs on his piano. Pongo enjoyed listening to the music, but sometimes life could get pretty dull. He was certain that Roger would be much happier if he met someone. Pongo was pretty sure he'd be happier with a companion too. Then one day, Roger took Pongo for a walk in the park. They passed a lovely young woman reading by the pond. With her was the most beautiful Dalmatian Pongo had ever seen. It was almost too good to be true. But the woman and her Dalmatian were leaving the park. Pongo needed to act fast. He started to bark. Then he tugged at his leash and yanked Roger directly in front of the young woman. He wrapped the leash around their legs and before he knew it, they stumbled into the pond. The woman, whose name was Anita, was startled at first. But she and Roger began talking and laughing, and they discovered they had a lot in common. Pedita, Anita's pet Dalmatian, and Pongo had a lot in common too. The months passed. Roger and Anita fell in love, and soon they were married. Together with Pongo and Perdita, the newlyweds moved into a beautiful home. They hired a friendly cook and housekeeper named Nanny. Pongo couldn't have been happier. Life was far from dull now. Then, one morning, Perdita had some wonderful news. They were expecting puppies. But their celebration was unfortunately cut short when Cruella de Vil, Anita's mean old schoolmate, barged into their home. She was dressed in an expensive fur coat and carried a fur handbag. She was obsessed with the idea of puppies. Anita, darling, she crooned. Where are they, the puppies? Such perfectly beautiful coats. Oh, it'll be at least three weeks, Anita responded. Pedita had overheard the conversation and cried to Pongo, She wants our puppies. She can't possibly love them. Oh, Pongo! Three weeks passed quickly, and in that time, excitement rose in their London home. Soon enough, Nanny was shouting, The puppies are here! The puppies are here! Pongo and Roger found Perdita and Anita surrounded by 15 adorable puppies. Pongo nuzzled each one as Roger danced around the room. Dean puppies? How marvellous! cried Cruella once again storming into their home. Cruella eagerly plucked at the blanket covering one of the puppies, but the moment she saw the tiny Dalmatian, she pulled back in disgust. They're mongrels! Why, they don't have any spots, she said. They are not mongrels. They'll get their spots. Just wait and see, Nanny exclaimed. Cruella's devilish grin returned. In that case, I'll take them all. As Cruella began writing a check, spraying ink everywhere, Roger saw Anita's sad expression. He firmly shook his head. We're not selling the puppies. Not a single one. And that's final. Cruella's grin vanished, replaced with a sneer. She was furious. She ripped up the check and yelled, All right, keep the little beasts for all I care. I'll get even. Just wait. You'll be sorry. Perdita and Pongo were so relieved. Roger had stood up to Cruella and their puppies were safe. Weeks passed. The puppies all grew healthy and strong. Pongo smiled every time he thought about their completely different and lovable personalities. Rolly was always hungry. Lucky always got into mischief. Penny and Patch were never apart and they all loved watching their hero Thunderbolt's adventures on television. One winter evening, Nanny offered to look after the puppies while Roger and Anita took Pongo and Perdita on a walk. Just as she put the little ones to bed, 
two suspicious-looking men came to the front door. Good evening, Mum. We're here to inspect the wiring and the switches, said the tall one. Nanny didn't believe them. You're not coming in here. I'll call the police, she cried. But the two thugs pushed past Nanny and kidnapped the puppies. Pongo and Perdita were heartbroken. They were certain Cruella was behind it. But without any proof, there was nothing the police could do. Pongo realised there was only one hope left. Purdy, I'm afraid it's all up to us, he said. There's the twilight bark. It's the very fastest way to send news. If our puppies are anywhere in the city, the London dogs will know. So that night, on their evening walk, Pongo and Perdita barked as loudly as they could to alert all the dogs in London. From backyards to rooftops, the London dogs passed the news along to try and help Perdita and Pongo find their puppies. Their message spread far and wide. Miles away, in the sleepy countryside, an old sheepdog called the Colonel caught wind of the distant barks. Sounds like an alert. It's from London. Fifteen spotted puddles stolen. Confused, he listened again. Of course, puppies, he said to his friends. A tabby cat named Sergeant Tibbs responded, Colonel, sir, two nights past, I heard puppy barking. He remembered it came from the Deville Manor. The colonel nodded. Well, I suppose we'd better investigate. On the double man. Sergeant Tibbs saluted as he left the barn. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Sergeant Tibbs crept over to the dreary, crumbling mansion and carefully peeked inside. The two crooks, Horace and Jasper, were sitting by the fire watching television, and scattered on the floor around them were 99 Dalmatian puppies. Psst! Are you one of the 15 stolen puppies? Tibbs asked one of them. They're over there, the puppy responded, pointing to the television. Sergeant Tibbs quickly counted. All 15 puppies were there. He raced back to report to the colonel. Using the twilight bark, the colonel sent word to Pongo and Perdita. Pongo's eyes grew wide when he heard that the puppies were being held prisoner at the Deville mansion. He and Perdita left home and headed north to find them. Perdita was so worried. Cruella had been behind the kidnapping. Who knew what evil plans that woman had in store? She hoped they weren't too late. Meanwhile, Sergeant Tibbs raced back to the mansion to try to help the puppies escape. Just as he arrived, Cruella burst in, yelling at Horace and Jasper. I tell you, it's got to be done tonight, she shouted at them. Cruella wanted to make the puppies into fur coats. Do it now. I'll be back in the morning and the job better be done. Left, Sergeant Tibbs seized his chance. If he didn't hurry, all 99 puppies were in big trouble. He whispered through a hole in the wall. Psst, kids, follow me. One by one, the puppies snuck out through the hole. The last puppy was escaping when Jasper turned around. Horace, look, they're gone, he called. The two crooks chased the puppies through the mansion and eventually cornered them in the living room. Sergeant Tibbs tried to shield the Dalmatians, but he was too small to protect all 99. Just as Jasper was raising his club to strike, Pongo and Perdita burst through a window. They snarled and yapped, fighting off the crooks so the puppies could escape back to the barn. Then Pongo and Perdita raced away too. Safe at the barn, Perdita nuzzled Rolly, Lucky, Penny, Patch, and the rest of her darling puppies. But there were more than just her own puppies to look out for now. Pongo gazed out the window at the snowy countryside. Horace and Jasper were sure to come after them. And that meant Cruella would be close behind. It was risky, but there was only one choice. We have to get back to London somehow, Pongo declared. Purdy, we'll take them home with us, all of them. 
Braving the bitter cold, Pongo and Perdita led the 99 puppies across the ice and snow back toward London. It was a long, slow journey, and the puppies grew cold and tired. Along the way, a friendly cocker spaniel offered them shelter in a dairy barn so they could warm up. They were miles from the Deville mansion by now. But they weren't safe yet. Somehow, Cruella had followed their tracks and was right outside. Luckily, a black Labrador retriever found them a ride to London in a moving van. But Pongo, there's Cruella, Perdita pointed out. How will we get to the van? Then Pongo saw that a few of the puppies had been rolling around in a dusty pile of soot from the fireplace. He had a great idea and started rolling in the soot too. Look, I'm a Labrador, he cheered. Come on, kids. One of the puppies smiled. I've always wanted to get good and dirty. Soon the van was ready to leave for London. Pongo quickly rolled each of the puppies in the soot. Then, one by one, he and Perdita carried them onto the moving van. Their disguise worked! Cruella saw them and thought they were black Labrador puppies. But, just as Perdita and Pongo were loading the last puppy, a clump of snow fell on him, wiping off the soot. Cruella saw the clean puppy and knew she had found them. There they go, she shouted as the van drove off. Cruella was furious. Ranting and raving, she slammed her car into the side of the van. She wanted to drive them off the road. The moving van teetered on the edge of an embankment. It was about to tumble over. Out of nowhere, Horace and Jasper came skidding down the hill. They were trying to catch the van too but they hit Cruella's car instead. The villains plummeted down the slope, slipping and sliding until they crashed at the very bottom. Cruella crawled out of the wreck and cried, You fools! Pongo and Perdita sighed. They were safe at last. Back at home in London, Roger and Anita were very sad. First, their puppies had been stolen, and now Pongo and Perdita were missing. But suddenly, Pongo, Perdita, and the puppies burst into the room. Roger and Anita were overjoyed until they noticed all of the puppies. Roger, Anita, and Nanny started counting. A hundred and one, said Anita. What'll we do with them? Roger grinned. We'll keep them. We'll buy a big place in the country. We'll have a Dalmatian plantation. And that's exactly what they did. <laughs>